Good morning, Cloud Community, and welcome back to fabulous Salt Lake City, Utah. We are here kicking off day two of our KubeCon North America coverage. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by, you guessed it, Rob Streche. Rob, really pumped for the day. I am too. I, I think this is one of those days where we can bridge off of things and make those connections together, which would be a network of things coming together. And I, I, I think one of the things that's always been very difficult with cloud computing, as I said from my days at the Hyperscaler, is the networking thing. And I, I'm really excited to be talking about how make it easy now as well. You know, everyone wants that easy button when Absolutely. talking about it. Absolutely. And I am so excited to welcome Anirban to the, to the show today. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you for having me. Your first KubeCon, I can't believe that. And, and you've been in the Kubernetes space. You're Kubernetes OG, just like we are. What's it like for you to be on the show floor and see all your friends? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very different experience. So it's kind of, uh, I used to run a uh, lot of the engineering for uh, Google Kubernetes Engine, right? And somehow I never had time to take that week off, right, and come to KubeCon. But it's amazingly, like, it's amazing to see the whole energy, right, and meet all my ex uh, family so to speak because at certain point right our uh, colleagues become family we spend so much time together absolutely and it, and it really does feel like a family particularly in the cloud and open source community i think more than some subsets of tech no offense to all of them but it's just a little bit different Multi-cloud has been a huge conversation that we've been having all week. Aviatrix, known for being an absolute pioneer in this space. You are a cloud master as well. So I want to start off high level. How do you see the space evolving? Where are we going with multi-cloud? What are the trends? Yeah, so uh, it's hard to believe that it has been 18 years from the time when AWS first was released and... You just made me feel very old yeah. in one single <laughs> sentence. <laughs> yeah, it, it's unbelievable. Like in 18 years, how much the public cloud and the whole uh, hybrid cloud space has evolved, right? Yeah. So today we have the hyperscalers, right? But along with that, we have regional clouds, we have specialized clouds. If you look around here, there are so many cloud companies, right, that have evolved. And uh, if we really look at it, most organizations, right, they started with a single cloud journey, and soon they had to move to what I call it a primary cloud journey, right? Uh, but moving forward, how I see it is that because every cloud provides such a great breast of breed services as well as specialization that organizations are now looking at a true multi-cloud strategy. Right, not just a primary cloud strategy, but a true multi-cloud strategy. So that's how I look at that multi-cloud is really important. So earlier, right, it was kind of a necessity, right? But now it is like if you have to really get ahead of your competitors, you have to enable your developers with multi-cloud, true multi-cloud. I love on your website, you, you call it career-saving cloud management. And I think, I think that is interesting, and I want to drill in here just for a second because you're bringing something up. I, I agree with you, conversation is definitely all around multi-cloud. It seems to be the cohesion. Kubernetes obviously being the platform there behind a lot of these new deployments. How far in this maturation or adoption curve of a truly robust and, and, and mature multi-cloud strategy do you think we are? Where, what are you seeing when you talk to companies? Yeah, so uh, especially from my GKE experience, right? what, uh, what I have been seeing is that uh, like large organizations, especially uh, like uh, huge, big enterprise companies, they have started something which many of the companies are calling it as cloud 2.0 strategy, right? Because they all started, most of them started with AWS, right? Because that was the incumbent cloud, right? But now, over time, they are looking at, hey, it's not just AWS, but all the other clouds provide great value, right? And especially with Kubernetes, right? It has become like sh kind of shifting, and then on top of that, all the AI, right? Um, Gen AI and AI ML applications, right? People are really looking at a at a cloud 2.0 strategy, so to speak, which is 100% multi-cloud oriented. Yeah, and I, I think that to me, and one of the big themes for this morning's keynotes was security 
and there was a lot of talk about networking and things like that. How do you see people, because you guys are not just in the cloud, you're all the way to on-premise, colo, like you said, the other smaller tier two yes. clouds, not just the hyperscalers, the GPU clouds. How do you see people building out these applications that may have you know, Kubernetes and, you know, as part of that, they might have VMs as part of it, but they have, but one of the tough things is getting everything to talk together, yes. and especially from a network and a security. How do you see this evolving, and what are some of the challenges that you see out there? Uh, right, so um, if we look a little bit uh, behind what we have gone through, right, with even having organizations having multiple cloud, right, it was mostly a siloed space. Right, so they would have a particular application on one cloud, maybe another application from a different line of business in another cloud, right? But uh, with the coming of the Gen AI and all these applications, what has happened is that the data is distributed, the models, right, are in a different place, right, and also the applications are in a different place, right? And a lot of the data is actually on the edge, it is generated on the mm -hmm. edge, right? And all that data has to come in to the cloud, right? So that it can be processed and for either for training or inference or any of these use cases. So this is the time when there is a real need, right? For having a true multi-cloud and the key is when you come into a true multi-cloud situation, right? Networking and security is really important because what you really need, right, is high bandwidth connectivity and also it needs to be secure because like a lot of that data is PII data, right, there's credit card information. Uh, right. Like, yes, and we have customers who are in uh, healthcare, in finance and all like hospitals, they are uploading data into the cloud and it has to be secure, yeah. right? And that is what is fundamentally necessary, right? Because yeah, as you, Ravi, as you said, that in the uh, keynote, right, one of the key part was how do we have secure networking across all these different clouds and on-prem and edge, right? And how do we have security, right? And mm -hmm. those would be the real key pain points which organizations have to deal with and solve. Yeah, and I think some of the things that we also see is that, it, it, again, overlapping or exhaustion of IP addresses, some of the perimeter security aspects of it, and really having that true interconnection between the different pieces that, you know, again, you're, you're paying for. And people sometimes have become multi-cloud by accident, uh, and they have different pieces in different places, That's like you were saying. Point, and I, I think that, to me, um, because I, I think, and you kind of talk to this about in your blog and kind of really go down uh, into a, helping people understand how to like address these challenges. What was kind of the theme for the blog yes. for the people who haven't read it yet? So especially with Kubernetes, because Kubernetes has taken over especially on um, not just nor the legacy applications, people moving from VM to containers, but also all the new applications and AI applications, they're all being in containerized, right? So there are yeah. three big areas, right, which is key pain point today with Kubernetes and especially multi-cluster Kubernetes. So one is that Kubernetes is very IP hungry, right? So there is exhaustion, IP address exhaustion is the key and top of mind. IP hungry is a great way of phrasing that. <laughs> I haven't heard someone say it like that before and that you just nailed it. Yeah, yeah. It, it totally is, yeah. <laughs> and, and the other part is that overlapping IP. So there's this whole concept of island VPCs, right? And everybody kind of used most, most developers, they kind of use like the RFC 1918 space with a 10.xx IP address. And we have customers who have hun not just hundreds, even more than thousand VPCs with overlapping IP addresses. Wow. Now when you're connecting those, I'm how do you- I'm just thinking of that web. Exactly, it's right? It's complex. How do you do that? <laughs> yeah. So that's the number one problem. Number two problem is about security. Egress security is, critical and there are like actually millions of VPCs, right, with almost zero or very light egress 
security. And last but not the least is inter-cluster, high bandwidth, secure connectivity. So if I have to say top three problems which organizations have to solve is IPO exhaustion and overlap. Number two is sec network security and egress security of the, for the VPCs. And number three is high bandwidth secure connectivity between their clusters. I, I, I'm still just thinking about that web of pulling that all together right now, and I, no wonder you're around. Can you give us some examples of customers adopting this and already seeing success? I mean, this is obviously very much at scale in terms of the examples that you're dealing with, so yeah, what can you share? Yes, right, so uh, one of the things, uh, actually, um, uh, I wrote a blog on particularly these issues, right, and uh, thank you, Rob, for uh, reviewing it and providing feedback. Uh, so. Uh, the key piece, right, which is needed, right, uh, is about what we do is about a controller-based uh, solution, right, for Kubernetes for cross-cloud, right, and uh, we have customers who have, as I said, um, more than thousand island VPCs, right, with overlapping IP space, so. What we do is, because it's a controller-based, right, it can really take intent-based policies, networking and security policies, right, and they can connect all these overlapping IP address cl clusters through the NAT gateway, right, and they connect through the NAT gateway, and then the intent-based policies, right, it kind of attaches to all the API servers and gets all Kubernetes resources, right, and our customers can go and write intent-based policies with the Kubernetes resources without caring about the IP addresses, right? And That's a big deal. Yes, exactly, and, yeah. and we update the whole uh, policy dynamically based on, because Kubernetes is a very dynamic environment. It grows and shrinks and you have new replicas that is created. All of that, like within seconds, right, is gets updated into the data path, right? So three areas we really excel in. One is multi-cluster, multi-cloud control plane. Number two, right, is uh, basically intent-based policy. And number three is extremely fast reconciliation, right, so that it can keep up with the dynamic situation which is how Kubernetes works and it is great at. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, again, it's a lot of people here are trying to, I mean, a thousand VPCs is crazy. I mean, that I, I, I know some of your customers I can't talk about, but I, I, I think one of the great things is they're, they're world-class organizations. Like you said, they have thousands of VPCs spread across multiple customers and multiple... Where, where do people get started? Where, where should a customer get started? What's your recommendation, your advice for that? Um, yeah, thank you, that's a great question. Uh, every customer I talk to, the, there are few things I ask them to think about. First is that I think today, every organization should embrace multi-cloud, right? That's the best way to get ahead with their competitors and help their developers, right, to number one, right, churn out the best software and the best services, right, number one. Number two is that uh, networking and security should be number, is top of mind for them. Right, because without connecting, connectivity and without security, you really can't have a multi-cloud strategy, right? And last but not the least, to think of pure play solutions as much as possible so that the customers are not locked in, right, into a particular cloud, whatever the cloud is, right? For certain things, right, these, CSPs and the cloud providers are really great at, right? Uh, but for certain things, right, they should look at the best of the breed solutions, right? And that would give them also operational consistency. It would give leverage, right? It would give, uh, from compliance perspective, they don't have to do compliance on multiple clouds, multiple tech stack, right? So that's the final thing I generally tell, tell organizations to look at pure play 
cloud agnostic solutions as much as possible. Yeah, yeah and I, I think again, that's, I, I mean, having been at a hyperscaler myself, I think that is absolutely fantastic advice, especially the embracing that you may have gone there by accident to multi-cloud, but now you're there. So embrace it and solve for it. You guys had some exciting news earlier this week. Why don't you kind of you know, give us a little highlight of what you guys announced earlier in the week? Yeah, so the big thing which we announced this week uh, was Aviatrix Pass, right? Yeah. Uh, we are really excited. Um, and the main things which we provide there is number one, right? You can, you can, get to value, the time to value, right? And I, I, I challenge my team that the time to value should be like less than 10 minutes, wow. right? Love you should that. be, yeah, you should be able to onboard your VPCs and get the value of all the goodness from Aviatrix, right? Like uh, observability, uh, NAT gateways, security, uh, networking, right? All of that, you get it in 10 minutes. That's what... Uh, I love that. And the time it makes challenge. to get a cup of coffee, yep. you've got your time to value. Exactly. That's brilliant. Right? You, have to, you have to get the make the coffee fast, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we live... I, I love fast coffee, trust me. <laughs> it's, it's about what it takes it's, me to do on my espresso machine. Yeah, it's about yeah, 10 minutes. That's exactly. what I was thinking in the back of my mind. I know how long it takes before a call. I've got that, I've got that time uh, stamp. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And the second piece, which is really important, is that operations, right? We take away the toil of the operations from our customers. So we have a, a like a world-class networking oriented SRE team, right? We take care of all upgrades, day two operations, troubleshooting, making sure that everything is running uh, as needed, right? And they're getting the best uh, operational excellence right through SRE. Like for example, we take care of right sizing all these devices. And last but not the least is that uh, we provide the best TCO overall, right, with the past service. It sounds like a winning formula to me. Congratulations yeah. on the announcement. Exciting stuff. Thank you stuff. very much. We are <laughs> so excited. Yeah. Right? Making things easy is hard. That's, yes. that's what we know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's yes. what we know. To put it simply. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Last question for you. You've been a fantastic guest, and we can't Thank wait to you. see how the, how the adoption of this new announcement rolls out. What do you hope to be able to say at next KubeCon, whether that's in London or Atlanta, since you'll be going to them all now, uh, that you can't yet say today? Well, um, okay, I'll spin, spill the beans. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yeah, so um, as you have seen, right, there is like a lot of different sessions and keynote which is talking about uh, true multi-cloud networking and security, right? So one of the things we are close to releasing and in next months we will really hone on that is how do we provide that at scale, mm -hmm. right? So um, what the cool, what the major part which we have is we have a SDN controller, right? Which is a multi-cloud controller, right? And what we are doing is integrating it with the whole Kubernetes ecosystem to, to provide a true cross-cloud networking which adapts to your Kubernetes clusters, right? And uh, I'll, I'll give simple things like a uh, few, few just uh, crumbs here. So today, right, you can increase your Kubernetes clusters, whether it is number of nodes, whether it is number of pods, you, whether it is number of replicas, right, in seconds. Can you increase your bandwidth mm. in seconds? Can you propagate your governance and security and provide a consistent security in seconds, right? So those are the real questions we are trying to solve in next three to six months. Wow. Well, I look, tuned. yeah, Excellent. I was going to say, that was perfect. Perfect little tease there, Anirban. Thank you so much for Welcome. that. Also, shout out to your bling on your hands, just so everyone can see. Is everyone at Aviatrix as jewelry fashionable as you are? Oh. I, I've been admiring, I've been admiring <laughs> this entire talk under the lights. Everything looks great. Anirban, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking Thank the you. time out of your first KubeCon to join us. And Rob, always a joy. Oh, yeah. we, this is the perfect always start. Always learning. To I love it. it. Oh, always learning. Always be learning. Yes. ABL. Always. ABL. 
ABL. <laughs> We're ABL today. <laughs> yes, thank we you are. For having me. Yes. <laughs> Our pleasure. And thank all of you for tuning in. Hopefully, you're learning and enjoying this as much as we are. We're in Salt Lake City, Utah, here at KubeCon North America. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching the Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news.